Deep beneath the familiar landscapes of America, under the forests, the river valleys, the mountain ranges, and the quiet rolling hills, something ancient is always working. The crust may look still, but it is never resting. It shifts, stretches, compresses, fractures, and heals itself in slow breaths that last millions of years. These movements create spaces in the dark, a network of cracks and faults that open for only a moment, but reach downward into unimaginable heat. Inside these deep openings, the earth sends something upward. Boiling fluids charged with minerals, hotter than fire, moving under massive pressure. These fluids are not ordinary water. They are chemical currents carrying silica, iron, sulfur, copper, and small but powerful traces of gold dissolved in their heat. When the earth forces these fluids upward, they rise like invisible storms through the fractures, following every weakness, filling every crack, pushing higher as pressure changes. As they rise, the temperature drops, the pressure shifts, everything inside the fluid becomes unstable, and the first mineral to fall out of this boiling solution is silica, the foundation of quartz. Quartz forms instantly. It crystallizes in long white ribs that cling to the walls of the fracture, sealing it layer by layer. Every pulse of fluid adds a new layer. Every shift of pressure grows another band. Over time, the crack becomes narrower as quartz grows inward slowly locking itself shut. But gold does not crystallize with quartz. It waits. It stays dissolved much longer, needing a specific change in temperature and pressure before it can no longer remain in solution. And then in the final moments of cooling, when the fluid is losing its heat rapidly, when pressure collapses, when the last pulse slows down, gold falls out. It drops into micro-fractures between quartz crystals. It coats the walls. It fills tiny pockets that close seconds earlier. It becomes trapped inside the final spaces of the vein, locked away as quartz seals around it like a natural vault. This is why gold is so often found in quartz veins. Not because quartz attracts gold, but because quartz forms under nearly the same conditions and at nearly the same moment that gold loses its ability to stay dissolved. The two minerals are born from the same geological breath, but gold always arrives last. Quartz also survives where other minerals fail. It resists weathering. It survives erosion, crushing, acids, freezing, and heat. Entire mountains can crumble into dust while a quartz vein remains intact, bright and white against the darker host rock. This durability turns quartz veins into long-lasting markers, geological signatures that remain visible long after the surrounding stone disappears. When quartz stays exposed, the gold inside stays protected. Sometimes the vein remains whole. Sometimes it fractures again. Sometimes it breaks into pieces. Sometimes erosion scatters quartz fragments down slopes into valleys or into streams. Gold remains inside those fragments until something finally breaks them open. Water does this over time. Frost does it. Pressure does it. When the quartz breaks, the gold inside becomes free entering rivers, concentrating in black sands, settling in bedrock cracks, collecting in inside bends and natural traps. Even placer gold found in riverbeds begins its life inside a quartz vein. Every nugget that shines in a pan, every flake, every grain, all of them started in the moment when hydrothermal fluid lost its heat and gold fell out to quartz. Quartz veins also tell stories in their textures. Sharp boundaries show sudden pressure drops, the exact kind that trigger gold precipitation. Tiny sugary crystals reveal rapid cooling, another moment when gold often drops. 
White streaks cutting across darker rocks show deep, forceful fractures. Ideal pathways for the mineral-rich fluids that carry gold. Iron staining around a quartz vein reveals the oxidation of sulfides that often form beside gold. Networks of multiple parallel quartz veins show repeated pulses of mineral-rich fluids, increasing the chances that one of them carries gold. These natural signs are not human techniques. They are geological facts, signals written into the stone itself. As mountains rise and erosion deepens valleys, quartz veins slowly come into the open. Some appear on ridges, some on broken outcrops, some on canyon walls. Some lie exposed in long, jagged lines across the ground like pale scars. Every exposed vein was once sealed in darkness, carrying the memory of boiling fluids that rose from the deep. When you touch a quartz vein in the wild, you are touching the boundary of a geological event that may have happened hundreds of millions of years ago. The connection between quartz and gold is not random. It is chemical. It is physical. It is geological. In the world of gold recovery, some methods are so overlooked, so simple, that they almost sound unbelievable. Today we journey into one of the most natural processes of all. Recovering gold using nothing more than boiling and cooling. No acids, no toxic chemicals, no heavy industrial equipment, just fire, water, time, and patience. But as easy as it sounds, this process hides secrets that only reveal themselves step by step. If you miss one stage, the gold remains locked, concealed in the rock and sand, mocking your efforts. But if you follow carefully, what begins as dull material could transform before your eyes into shining fragments of treasure. Imagine standing by a riverbed where quartz veins have shattered and released their contents into the sand. You scoop up a handful, and hidden within that dirt lies the ancient legacy of molten earth. The challenge is unlocking it. Boiling and cooling may seem too gentle to extract such a stubborn metal, but when done correctly, it can coax the gold to separate itself naturally. And so the process begins. First comes collection. Not all material responds to this technique. You must start with ore that carries free milling gold or fine particles mixed with quartz, sulfides, or black sands. The sharp eye picks samples that sparkle faintly under sunlight. Tiny flecks of metallic brightness or streaks of quartz threaded with iron staining. Each handful is a gamble, but within the right stones lies the reward. Now preparation. Rocks and sands must be reduced. Crushing is essential. Without acids or chemicals, you rely on heat and mechanical breakdown. The hammer, the mortar, the grinding stone, these become your tools. The ore is pounded into smaller fragments and then into dust fine enough that gold can be released during the boiling cycle. With every strike, the grains carry with them the story of mountains formed millions of years ago. Once the material is ready, the water is brought to life. A fire is lit and a pot of water set to boil. Here lies the simplicity. Water, the universal solvent, when pushed to its limits of heat, can reveal surprising properties. As the ore is introduced into the rolling boil, the fine particles scatter, suspended in turbulence. Gold being dense begins to behave differently than lighter minerals. At first it seems chaotic, clouds of dust, rising bubbles, fragments colliding, but patience reveals order. The lightest silicates and sands stay aloft, carried by the motion of boiling water. Tiny iron oxides may remain suspended, discoloring the water with rusty tones, but the gold does not drift. It sinks, resilient, enduring the chaos until it settles at the bottom. Then comes the waiting. The boiling continues, and with it, the separation sharpens. This is not a quick trick. It is a gradual purification. The repeated cycles of rising bubbles and swirling currents work like nature's own sluice, shifting lighter materials upward and forcing heavies downward. If you scoop prematurely, the results vanish. But if you trust the method, the precious metal begins to stand apart. And when the boiling ceases, the next phase begins. 
cooling. It is during cooling that the most dramatic transformation can occur. As water slowly surrenders its heat, convection currents calm and particles find their final resting place. The lighter minerals drift toward the top or remain in suspension, while dense fragments, including gold, form a concentrated layer below. The once chaotic mixture grows still, like a hidden message revealed only when the noise fades. Cooling can take minutes or hours depending on the volume. Some practitioners accelerate it with cold stones or by pouring into secondary containers, creating thermal shocks that drive further separation. Imagine dipping a glowing hot stone into icy water, the cracking, the release, the sudden currents. In that turbulence, stubborn particles shake free and gold becomes more defined in its resting place. When the vessel is still, the suspense peaks. The surface is skimmed, removing floating silicates, organics, and foam. Beneath lies clearer water and at the bottom, a gathering of dense material. It may not look golden at first. Black sands, magnetic iron, and other heavies often cloak the treasure. But within that dark bed lie the particles of gold, waiting for their reveal. At this stage, the process repeats. The material can be decanted and reintroduced into boiling water again. Each cycle sharpens the separation, stripping away unwanted companions until only the heaviest remain. Boiling and cooling act like nature's heartbeat, contracting and releasing, each pulse driving the gold closer to purity. What follows is the final unveiling. The concentrate is carefully poured, leaving behind the densest fraction. Sometimes it glitters immediately, tiny yellow specks gleaming among darker grains. Sometimes it hides, demanding panning or gentle blowing to uncover. Either way, the moment of recognition carries the thrill of discovery. You began with rough ore, and through nothing but fire, water, and patience, the gold has shown itself. This method, while simple, carries a deep scientific truth. Gold resists chemical alteration, refuses to corrode, and clings to density as its greatest ally. By using boiling and cooling, you're harnessing physics itself, the contrast between density, temperature, and motion. You're not forcing the gold out. You're letting it choose its place, and its place is always at the bottom. And so the cycle continues. Each attempt brings refinement. Each batch of ore reveals its secrets slowly. Some yields are modest, flecks barely visible. Others shock you with their richness, clusters shining like starlight trapped in stone. But always the process is the same. Fire, water, time, and trust. In the end, what begins as a suspension of dust becomes an undeniable truth. Gold is stubborn, but it cannot hide forever. Through boiling and cooling, the metal's ancient resilience becomes its undoing, and what was once locked in rock rests in your hands, gleaming with quiet defiance against the centuries that tried to bury it. This is gold recovery at its most elemental. No laboratories, no poisons, no machines. Just the raw forces of nature, replicated by human hands. The method is slow, but the reward lies not only in the metal itself, but in the timeless connection between Earth's hidden treasures and those patient enough to uncover them. And when the final particles are gathered, shimmering in the pan, you understand what few ever will, that even the simplest forces, boiling and cooling, hold the power to unlock the eternal brilliance of gold. And so, from fire to water, from boiling chaos to cooling stillness, the story of gold unfolds once again. A story as old as the earth itself, revealed through nothing more than patience and the simplest forces of nature. What began as ordinary rock has now left behind its shining truth. But remember, this is only one path among many. Gold is never easy, and the earth never gives up its secrets without a test. Every method has its challenges, every rock holds its mystery, and every attempt pushes you closer to unlocking the treasure beneath your feet. If today's journey kept you at the edge of curiosity, imagine what waits in the stories yet untold. Here on EGS Pro, we don't just talk about gold, we reveal the hidden science, the ancient secrets, 
and the overlooked methods that nature itself designed. So if you're ready for the next mystery, don't just leave quietly. Stay with us. Subscribe, share this journey with others, and let your curiosity grow brighter than the shine of gold itself. This was today's chapter, but the earth holds countless more. Until next time, stay curious, stay determined, and remember, where there are rocks, there may be gold.